Take 105. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Sir Jedi Sentinel. Welcome to the Sentinel Vlogs. Yes, I know I said my next vlog would be my top 10 personal favorite 6 Doctor Audio dramas, but that has to take a back seat once again. I have the list organized, I have everything ready, I just need the time to record it, and that hasn't been easy to come by lately. Don't worry, it's coming soon. In the meantime though, to sate your hunger, I have another big finish unboxing here. At the last week of April, first week of May, in that same week, Big Finish had a sale, 60% off the Lost Stories range. The Lost Stories has been something I've been interested in for a little bit. It's not Big Finish's original work. These were stories that were proposed for the classic series that ultimately, for one reason or another, never made it to the screen. Um, a few of these I know about, like, um, I think the most famous lost story, uh, you could be wrong, or two of the most famous lost stories were Genesis of the Cybermen. It was going to be a fifth Doctor story that was a spiritual sequel to the fourth Doctor, Genesis of the Daleks. Um, it would revolve around the same premise. The Doctor goes back in time and witnesses and even participates in the creation of his iconic foe. And like the title says, this time around it would be the Cybermen. As famous as the story is, it ultimately wasn't adapted for the Lost Stories because Big Finish wrote their own Genesis of the Cybermen called Spare Parts, which is amazing. It, I hesitate to say it's their best story, but it's one of Big Finish's best stories. Um, and yeah, Spare Parts, check it out. You will not be disappointed. The other lost story that, I th or lost stories in this case, that I think are the most famous are, or is, the original Season 23. Um, now, as I've talked about, as every Doctor Who fan knows, Colin Baker had a very turbulent run as the Sixth Doctor, which is a shame. I figured, you know, he... If he got better material, he might have been one of the best Doctors, and I think Big Finish just shows that. It, and again, he's my favorite Doctor. But anyway, at the end of Season 22, Big Finish put Doctor Who on hiatus. Um, they had all these stories planned for Season 23, one of which I'm going to talk about later. However, all the stories were scrapped, and Season 23 was rewritten as Trial of a Time Lord. Um, actually, on one of the DVDs here, there is a feature talking about the original Season 23. I remember two of the stories. Again, one I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And the other, which has not been brought back yet was called Yellow Fever and How to Cure It. It featured the Doctor facing the Master and the Ronnie once again. This time, they've teamed up with the Autons. <coughs> Another feature of this story is that it was going to be set in Singapore. Singapore. Once again, this story was called Yellow Fever and How to Cure It. Whoops. But, yeah, that's sort of your little introduction to the Lost Stories, if you're unfamiliar with them. So, let's just jump right into this. Real quick, from this sale, I bought almost all the Colin Baker stories. Um, I would have bought them all, but even at 60% off, that was a little bit above my budget. So, I had to opt for most of them. I So far in the Lost Stories... Colin Baker has done 11, and I bought all but three of them. That's the easier way to... I bought eight of them. The three I didn't buy, and I hope The Lost Stories goes on sale again so I can complete my con my collection, were Mission to Magnus, The Song of Megaptera, and The Macross. And I'll be talking a little bit more about the ones I did buy, but first, 
let's just get into this. I still love how easy these types of packages are to open. It never, it's really cathartic. And I wonder if this one came with it. Yes, it did. This one came with a Vortex magazine, as they all do. This one advertising Torchwood Believe. I can't really talk about that because I haven't watched Torchwood yet, and I haven't listened to the Torchwood audios yet, so. As well as the Eighth Doctor's newest series, Ravenous. Can I get that in camera better? Which, so far, I've been hearing good things about, but before I can do that, I need to listen to Dark Eyes and Doom Coalition first. Now here we are, the Lost Stories. Oh, they're out of order. I kind of wanted to start from scratch on this to, and go through them chronologically. So the first story we have here is Paradise Five. And hang on, I'm looking at these now, and I think these are all stories with Perry, which is interesting. I'm not, because now I'm, I wonder if any of the Six Doctor stories Six Doctor Lost stories were stories proposed when he had when Mel was introduced as a companion. Anyway, so Paradise Five, the synopsis is The Doctor and Perry visit planet Targos Delta to check in on old friend Professor Albrecht Thompson, only to discover that he has vanished. He was last sighted taking a shuttle to the holiday resort of Paradise Five, then never seen again. The Doctor's curiosity is piqued. They must investigate, but they must do so stealthily. Stealthily. Yeah. Perry will go undercover on Paradise Five, while the Doctor hides in the shadows. Because Paradise holds a terrible secret beneath the white marble and gold trimmings. The mute cherubs have a to story to tell, and the yellow hymn are coming. Oh, that's interesting. I going to check back on some of my other CDs to see if that's there, because I just saw this, and it says this CD contains behind-the-scenes interviews with the cast and crew. Um, totally blanking, which, on Big Finish's CDs, especially in their box sets, I love the behind-the-scenes stuff. I love hearing the process for how the stories were written, how they came up with the ideas, and... I really love the interviews with the cast as well. I was kind of hoping um, that these synopsises would this would explain why these didn't make it to screen. Like like I said, some of these I know why they didn't make it to screen, but not all of them. The next story here we have here is the first Centaurans, and this is an origin story. This one I know do know a little bit about. I mean, basically, I mean, as the story says, it's an origin story. The Doctor witnesses the creation of the Centaurans, one of his, one of the Doctor's iconic foes. This one, while I'm, I kind of know why it didn't get made. Um, ultimately, the story was dropped. It was proposed for season twenty-two, and the story was ultimately dropped in favor of the two Doctors, which is one of my favorite stories, despite its flaws. And next up is The Hollows of Time. And according to this one, the Doctor and Perry have been on a holiday visiting old friend Reverend Foxwell in the sleepy English village of Hallowdeen. But why are their memories so hazy? Piecing together events, they recall a mysterious chauffeur who is not what he seems, and Foxwell's experiments that could alter the nature of reality. Huge sand creatures have been sighted in the dunes, and many of the locals are devoted to a leader known as Professor Stream. But who is Stream, and what lies within the hollows of time? The Doctor will discover that not every question has a definitive answer. So... This one sounds like a mystery, and 
from what I just read, it sounds like a really engaging mystery at that. Like I said, I was kind of unfamiliar with some of these stories, and a lot of them, I... Oh, how to say, um... I'd never heard of. Because usually, when I'm looking for new Big Finish material to listen to, I go by recommendation, and I honestly don't see a lot in terms of the lost stories, which... Hopefully, I'll see more. Next is... Power Play. And this one features Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant again, but this one also features Deborah Watling, who recently passed away. Many Doctor Who fans will recognize her as the second Doctor's companion, Victoria Waterfield. It's been many years since Victoria Waterfield traveled through time and space, fighting monsters and dictators. Now she's back on Earth, fighting for the future of the planet. But are her environmental campaigns so far removed from those former adventures in the Vortex? As trucks carrying nuclear waste start to vanish into the air, her friends are kidnapped by a dangerous alien police force and a nuclear power plant runs dangerously close to meltdown. Victoria spies a familiar blue box. The Doctor, after all this time, has come back. And now, Victoria Waterfield is going to kill him. So, I don't know the premise of when that story was proposed or how it came about. Hey guys, sorry about that. I had to excuse myself to have a brief coughing fit. But before I left, I was talking about power play. As I was saying, I have no idea how that story was proposed or when, but... I imagine it was a sequel to the two Doctors when the se the Sixth Doctor met the Second Doctor and Jamie. Like I said, I'm not sure about that. But, besides that, I love premises of stories like this. Um, I don't know if they have a name for not, but I'm going to call them companion reintroduction stories. You know, stories where the Doctor in a later incarnation, meets up with older versions of his companions who traveled with him in a previous incarnation. Um, most famous of these was in New Who, when the Tenth Doctor went on that adventure with Sarah Jane. Big Finish did this a few times in the final series of The War Doctor. The War Doctor traveled with Le met up with Leela, um... Or Death in the Family, where the Seventh Doctor met Evelyn again. But yeah, I, I love those stories. It's just... It's an interesting idea, for one thing, and... I just think, you know, it's a time, time travel. This should be done more often. So anyway, let's keep going. And next up, we have... Leviathan. No one lives to old age in the villain in the village. Wow. When their time has come, they are taken and never seen again. That is the way. And should anyone try to break with the established order of things, then the fury of Hearn the Hunter is unleashed. When the TARDIS materializes near a crat near a castle in this medieval society, the Doctor and Perry befriend Girth, a terrified youth who is attempting to flee his fate. Boy, I picked a wrong day to do this. Nothing but interruptions. Anyway, Leviathan. Sounds like an interesting ghost story, so looking forward to it. For a lot of these, I wish there was more I could say, but, you know, like I said... I have no recommendations, I don't know much about these stories, so for most of them, I'm going in blind. We have three more left. Next is The Guardians of Prophecy. 
The TARDIS materializes on Serenity, the last surviving world of the Trocken Union. Perry expects a good place for a holiday. Not Tomb Raiders, a labyrinth filled with terrifying monsters, and a trap-laden necropolis. For Serenity's gentle name belies its history as the home planet of the Melker. Soldiers created to serve a long, dead, dark force, the embodiment of evil itself. Whilst they sleep, vicious thieves are after it, this force's secrets and will stop at nothing to find them. But will they find too much? So, this story is a sequel to The Keeper of Trocken. The Keeper of Trocken was Tom Baker's penultimate story before Logopolis, where he regenerated. And, yeah, which, you know, a lot of these were introduced in The Keeper of Trocken. The Melker, the Trocken Union, and... That story also introduced the Jeffrey Beaver's Master, who is one of my favorites. And honestly, because I love The Keeper of Trocken so much, it's... I think it's my second favorite Tom Baker story. It's, I have to think about that one, though. Um, I was really interested in this one. To left, point of entry. Oh, I wish I could display these better, but... The 16th century, playwright Kit Marlowe is attempting to write Dr. Faustus, Dr. Faustus when a darkness descends on his life in the cavernous form of a Spaniard called Velez. The monstrosity is in search of a stone blade that was brought from South America. After a near disastrous collision with an asteroid in space, the TARDIS makes an emergency landing in Elizabethan England. These two events are connected, the Omnim are ready, and the point of entry approaches. So yeah, this one looks like a celebrity historical, and looks like it may be tied to Doctor, the play Dr. Faustus, and, you know, that's all it. And finally, we're on the last story. Ironically, even though this is the last story in the package, it is the first story of the Lost Stories range, and it is The Nightmare Fair. The TARDIS has been drawn to Blackpool in the year 1985, where the Doctor intends to investigate a dangerous space-time vortex, while enjoying some local attractions along the way, but an old enemy is watching. From his base deep within the amusement park, a timeless being who craves revenge. The Celestial Toymaker has returned. The game is on, and should he lose, the Doctor will pay the ultimate fate. So like I said, of the various Lost Stories, um, I know the most about the Nightmare Fair. It was one of the stories proposed for the original Season 23, which I talked about at the start of the video, and... It is a sequel to the first Doctor story, The Celestial Toymaker, which, yeah, from that description, The Celestial Toymaker is a godlike being who the Doctor bested once before, like I said, in his first incarnation. In the series, The Celestial Toymaker was played by Michael Goff. Modern day audiences probably best know him best as Probably best know him best. I do word good. Anyway, Michael Goff. Audiences probably know him best as Alfred in the Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher Batman movies. And then, before he passed, his later works with Tim Burton, including Sleepy Hollow and Corpse Bride. The idea for this is that The Nightmare Fair was going to be the premiere of season 23. In fact, in... The season 22 finale, Revelations of the Daleks, Perry was going to suggest going to Blackpool, and then season 23 would have started with the Nightmare Fair, and Ben, and yes. However, because of that, however, because after season 22, the show was put on hiatus, Perry's ultimate line was edited out, and the 
Revelation of the Daleks ended abruptly. Honestly, I've most been looking forward to this one, so we'll see how it goes. Did you like what you saw? This has been Sir Jedi Sentinel. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and then click the notification bell so you get notifications to when I upload new videos. This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, because I said that twice, and I'll see you guys next time.